This segment of our course will look at pistons, cylinders, and clearance pockets. First, let's look at pistons. This is a cutaway view of two basic types of pistons. Both are made of cast iron, the most common type of metal used for their construction. As you can see, the piston on the left is solid cast iron. Most pistons, up to 7 inches in diameter, are made of solid metal. The piston on the right is hollow. The hollow construction is meant for one reason only, to reduce the weight of the piston. Most pistons over 7 inches in diameter are made in this fashion. But remember, this is not a hard and fast rule. There could be solid pistons larger than 7 inches in diameter, and there could be hollow pistons smaller than 7 inches across. This is only a very general rule intended as a guide. There is an important point you should remember with regard to hollow pistons. There's a possibility that gas could be trapped inside one of these pistons when it's removed from the compressor for repair. These pistons are equipped with pipe plugs to release this trapped gas. Since the gas trapped inside could be explosive, be extremely careful when removing the plugs. Do not generate sparks. If the plug is frozen and you have to drill it out, use a pneumatic drill. This type of drill will not generate sparks that could ignite the gas. And don't forget to use plenty of water or other coolant to keep the drill cool during the operation. Getting back to the piston itself, notice that the piston rod extends all the way through the piston. The piston is held on the rod with these lock nuts recessed in a counter bore. These lock nuts must be drawn up very tight to hold the piston against the shoulder on the rod. The other part of the piston is the piston rings, which may be made of metal or micarta. They are mounted in grooves in the piston and are meant to provide a seal between the piston and the cylinder. These rings must be installed so there is tension of the rings against the cylinder wall. During the operation of the compressor, the pressure of the gas helps to hold the rings against the walls of the cylinder, or liner. The rings actually serve a dual purpose. Number one, they prevent or minimize leakage of air or gas between the piston and the cylinder wall. Number two, they pick up oil from a lubricator feed hole in the cylinder wall and spread the oil over the cylinder wall for the length of the stroke. The piston rings are made in either one piece with a gap, like that shown on the left, or they may be segmented, like the example shown on the right. The gaps in the piston rings allow them to expand as they heat up during operation of the compressor. That's all there is to an average piston. The piston rides inside the cylinder of the compressor. The cylinder, as you have seen, is that part in which the gas is compressed during the operation. To reduce repair costs, most cylinders are lined with a special liner. Consequently, if the piston causes excessive wear on the cylinder, it is only necessary to replace the liner, not the entire cylinder body. A cylinder liner is usually worn where the piston rings rub against it during operation. Because of the weight of the piston, the wear is usually greatest at the bottom of a horizontal cylinder. When replacing a cylinder liner, it is very important to remember to measure the cylinder for wear at three points with an inside micrometer. Mike the cylinder at both ends, the head end and the crank end, and in the center. Wear will normally be greater at the center, resulting in a concave effect, similar to this exaggerated sketch. 
Once the measurements have been taken and checked against the manufacturer's specifications, it may be necessary to replace or machine the cylinder liner if wear is found to be excessive. The cylinder is cooled during operation on most models by water jackets. Cool water circulating through these jackets cools the cylinder and liner during operation of the compressor. The cylinder liner is usually counterbored near the ends of the piston ring travel. The counter bores are made just ahead of the points where the piston rings stop and reverse direction. Unless the piston rings over travel the cylinder liner, shoulders may form in the liner due to the wear of the rings. The counter bores prevent the formation of these shoulders in the cylinder liner. Although we won't go into great detail, we do want to show you a part that some compressors may use, which can actually extend the volume of the cylinder. They are called clearance pockets. As you already know, some gas is left in the clearance space between the piston and cylinder end at the end of each piston stroke. In most cases, you will not want too much clearance, or it will affect the efficiency of your compressor. In short, the more clearance you have in the end of the cylinder, the less efficient your compressor is. However, there is one important asset. The larger the clearance, the less horsepower that is needed to drive the compressor. For this reason, clearance pockets are sometimes used. If a compressor is overloaded and the driver is having difficulty handling the load, a clearance pocket can help to solve the problem. A clearance pocket decreases the efficiency of the compressor, meaning that less gas or air is compressed and discharged. In turn, less horsepower is required to drive the compressor, taking the load off of the driver. Since clearance reduces horsepower requirements by the same amount that it reduces discharge capacity, clearance is an efficient method of controlling power requirements of reciprocating compressors. This compressor has a fixed volume clearance pocket. The clearance pocket is always in service and cannot be adjusted. This is a hand-operated fixed-volume clearance pocket. The valve makes it possible to use either the pocket or not to use it, according to your requirements. However, the pocket must be either open or closed on this model. This compressor is equipped with a variable clearance pocket. The hand wheel makes it possible to adjust the amount of clearance according to your requirements and the load on the compressor. Again, clearance pockets decrease the efficiency of the compressor, but they also decrease horsepower requirements. If your compressor is overloaded, a clearance pocket would help to reduce the overload. We have some questions for you now on pistons, cylinders, and cylinder clearance pockets. Please turn to exercise number three in your workbook.